Hey guys, welcome back to another video. How is it going? Today we're gonna to be looking at a specific application here. We're gonna be fitting that with a brushless motor, as you can tell from the topic of this video. Now what we're gonna be doing is taking everything that we learned in previous videos and kind of combining that in this specific video today. So if you haven't watched some of those videos, you might find a couple bits and pieces missing because we're not gonna go into detail about things that we've already covered. Uh, there are definitely videos that you can search on the channel to find those. Let's get started by first looking at what we need to do. As we know from previous videos, the first thing that we have to do is understand the application that we wish to you know, install our brushless motor within. And from the topic of the video, you already know that it's a 1 8 scale buggy that we're gonna be looking at today. That's important because we have to understand exactly how these are used. What kind of speeds can these achieve? What is going to be our specific speed goal? That's gonna be our number two goal that we have to get an understanding of. We know that these 1 8 scale buggies can easily push beyond 100 miles an hour but that's not what we're going to be looking to do today. What we're going to be focusing in on is kind of half of that. We're going to look at about 50 miles an hour. That's going to be around 80 kilometers an hour for our metric folks. Uh, so what we want to do from there is understand exactly how we can achieve that. Well, when we look at the guys who are running closer to 100 miles an hour, we can see that they're running on easily, you know, 6S LiPo is getting them to that speed. Uh, when we look at the guys who are running on four cell, some of them are actually operating at above 60 miles an hour. We know that the buggy has a range of voltage of typically between four and six cell lithium polymer. This is how we get an understanding as to where do we start? Well, we start between four and six, we need to choose one. Then we identify, can we hit our goal of 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour with only four cell? And the answer to that also was yes, as other people have been doing that. Uh, the forums are great for this sort of information to help guide and steer you when you don't know. Uh, a lot of things in RC comes from experience only. You can only get a certain amount of information based off of you know theoretical approaches and we'll look at one with today's video uh, so then the next thing once we understand our speed goal we understand the four cell lipo this is what we want to use and we're putting this into the 1 8 scale buggy application uh, the next thing that we need to know is more details about our buggy well this is the buggy that we're gonna be using for today you've seen it probably in many other videos that we've talked about uh, we need to know more about this in order to understand how to put a brushless motor into it. Now there is already a brushless motor into it here that has been selected. Uh, we're gonna run through it again here in this video. Now, the what we need to know specifically comes from our gearing, our transmission. You know, how does this play a role? Well, gearing changes the amount of speed that you put in versus what comes out. We need to know what's going on in that relationship. We also need to know what kind of diameter tire are we gonna be using? In our application today, we're gonna be putting on somewhere between 100 and 110 millimeter diameter tires. We need to know and pick one so that we can go through that calculation. The next thing we need to know is what pinion size gear are we going to be starting with? Well, the range that I'm able to fit inside this buggy, there is physical limitations on the pinion size that you put on the motor. Be aware of that. What you wanna do is pick a number that is roughly halfway between your minimum and maximum. I know that the minimum is somewhere around 12, 12 teeth, and I know that the maximum is somewhere between, uh, maybe somewhere around 1920. I go with a sort of middle ground of 16. I think it actually came with a 16 tooth. So that's what we're gonna start with from there. And that's important and we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Uh, so once I know that, the next thing I need to know is what is that marrying up or mating to? Well, in this case, it's going to be the spur gear and that's somewhere around 48 teeth. And then from there, that's our center differential. It goes and has these shafts, solid shafts that run to the rear differential as well as the front differential. Now the gearing in the front and rear differential are identical. It's the same amount of teeth on the pinion differential gear as well as the spur differential gear. Those are important to know because you only need to look at one of them specifically in order to get the, the gearing ratio there. So write down the pinion size as well as the spur gear size within the differential as well. Now you should have a count of teeth, you know, the teeth count on each one of these gears and there should be four counts that you have. Uh, one for the pinion on the motor, one for the spur gear, and then you have the pinion and spur gear on the differential. This is important. If you don't know what it is, there's two ways you can find it. First, in the manual, you can find the replacement part, and it'll typically give you a count of the teeth. It will say somewhere around the, the line of like 48T. So that would represent it's a 48T spur gear. 
Uh, the other way to do it is to simply pull the parts of, you know, out of here and count the teeth yourself. Make sure you try and do it as accurately as possible because it will affect your results. If you have an older buggy, this might be what you have to do. Uh, so there you have it. We now know exactly what's going on within our buggy internally in order to calculate certain aspects of our, our brushless motor. Now we're dialing into specifically the brushless motor. We have videos that cover how you pick the the speed control and the battery pack from there. Uh, we're gonna go and look at the motor. First thing we're gonna cover is how do we pick the physical size of our brushless motor today? Well, there's multiple approaches that you can you know, use on this sort of application. The first could be just by experience. Well, how do you know or how would you gain this experience? Well, I know that this buggy to get 50 miles an hour, it's going to take about 1200 watts of continuous power. That is very conservative. It's gonna take actually less than that, but I know 1200 watts is definitely gonna be enough to push this beyond the 50 mile an hour mark. And uh, that's exactly what I wanna do. How would you know that it's 1200 watts? Well, what you could do is you could use, based off of what you've seen, let's say you hop on the on forums and you understand that some guys are running this at 50 miles an hour and they're using a 120 amp speed control and they're using 4S LiPo power. This is exactly what you want, 4S LiPo power, 50 miles an hour. You know that their speed control is running at 120 amps. This way, you know, if they have a reliable system and it's working for them and you understand that because they're explaining it and you see it running videos and all this, now you can guarantee yourself that it must be somewhat reliable. Uh, so what you can do from here is do a quick calculation. Well, if you take 120 amps, we'll use a more uh, round number such as 100, 100 amps, and then you multiply that by the voltage that they're running, which is 14.8. Let's use a number of 15. It's just easier to calculate. 15 volts times our 100 amps gets us 1500 watts. Now, if we take a percentage of that, uh, we'll get somewhere around our 1200. Now, that would get you that speed, and it would allow you to be within the the range of what's acceptable for your power system. You know that power systems, if it's rated at 120 amps, it's not gonna be actually running at 120 amps in order to get there. That is not a reliable power system. That's why we use a percentage in order to determine that. Uh, so there you have it, 1200 watts. That's one approach that you can use. From there you can use, you know, this is the theoretical approach. You can use what we've learned in previous videos. Our 1200 watts, we can take that and we, what we wanna do is convert that to a physical size. Well, we can convert 1200 watts using one of the ratios that we learned in a previous video to arrive at the mass of the motor that we would expect. At 1200 watts, we would expect to divide this by four in order to get a nice number of 300 grams. 300 grams is going to be the physical size of motor that you're gonna need in order to push this kind of power through your, your buggy. Uh, so our 300 gram motor is going to work out if you look on motors, if you're looking at motors, what weighs 300 grams? We wanna be at a minimum of 300 grams. We look online and we find that a 40 millimeter by 65 millimeter is actually somewhere around or just over 300 grams of mass. This way we know exactly what size motor. Now we have it nailed down to a 40 by 65 is enough motor to get us to our goals. The next thing that we can look at is KV. But before we do that, we're gonna look at how we can do this in using a second method uh, if we do not have the experience or we don't aren't comfortable enough to make those assumptions about the power level. Uh, what we can do in order to determine this is know exactly what kind of uh, ready to run buggies are out there. We can look at another ready to run buggy and see what kind of motor are they running on it. Uh, we can look up the, the, specifically the physical size of that motor. And if you do this, you would also realize that they're running around the same sort of length and diameter size of motor that we have already mentioned. There's no clear cut definition as to how you correctly size the motor to your specific goals, as well as your specific voltage that you wanna run and what kind of running you're gonna be doing with that vehicle. You know, 50 miles an hour means you're probably going on road. You might also want the power delivery for uh, running through some sort of dirt and even maybe some short grass. It always helps to be conservative when you're first picking out your brushless motor. Once you gain that experience, then this sort of approach is going to be easier. Uh, the next thing that we can talk about is KV. In order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on the radiocontrolinfo.com website. We're gonna use one of the calculators on there in order to determine the KV that would best suit our application and our speed goals. 
Hey guys, here's the website radiocontrolinfo.com. We're gonna go ahead and hover over information, hover over RC calculators, and we're gonna select the RC car calculator. From here, we're gonna end up on the calculator page that will help us out. Now, what we can do here is enter all the information that we know, so we can go ahead and select the LiPo cells. We know we're gonna use four cell lithium polymer battery pack, and then we go ahead and put all our transmission information in here. We know that we're using a 16 tooth pinion gear on the motor side with a 48 tooth spur gear, 11 tooth on our pinion of the differential, as well as a 43 tooth spur on the differential. We're gonna go with 110 millimeters on the diameter of the tire. This is quite common with 1.8 scale buggies. Now we are expecting 50 miles an hour out. What we don't know is the KV of the motor, and this is required as an put in this calculator. So what we're going to have to do here is guess and check. We have no idea what to put for motor KV, so let's start somewhere. We're going to go ahead and select 1500 and see what happens. We go ahead and select the calculate speed button. We click that and then we're going to arrive at the calculated speed. We look at the 1500 KV motor. It does provide us with 22.7. This is not enough. It's out by uh, at least half. So what we want to do, if it's out by half, we want to double it. We're going to go to 3000 KV. We're going to go ahead and calculate speed on this 3000 kV input. Here we get 45.5. This may be close enough for you for your goal. This is where you get to decide. Keep in mind, this is a theoretical calculation. It's not going to be exact. Now, so what you can do here, you can go and place a 3200 kV in there, but keep in mind that you also need to find a brushless motor that fits that specific motor kV. Uh, right now, we're looking at somewhere around 3200, even 3000 is probably going to be close enough to land us that 50 miles an hour. We can go ahead and select the 3200 kV. What's important before we leave this, uh, this screen here is that you note that this calculator already considers the load of the vehicle. In other words, that load of the vehicle, there's going to be resistance within the, the transmission and the tires and everything that adds up that the motor needs to push through, including even the resistance of air at the speed of 48.5 miles an hour. All of this is already built into the calculator. Now, keep in mind that the calculator doesn't know the size of vehicle that you're dealing with, and it won't ever know the size of your vehicle. If you are driving around a brick, that's going to be very inefficient. And and the speed that you're going to get out of that is going to be much less. So keep that in mind when you're going through these uh, estimations of speed and choosing the motor KV value. Now let's head back and talk about one thing more. Now that we have the physical size of the motor as well as the KV of the brushless motor, it doesn't end right there. The next thing that we need to do is drop all those components into our application and then go out for our first run. What we do is we set up everything up as normal and then we would make our first run. During that first run, you wanna pay close attention to the heat that's building up in all of your components. In this video, we talked about brushless motor. That's what we're interested in. You still wanna do this with the other components of your system because you also picked those out for your application. You wanna check the temperature of the motor and make sure that they're not exceeding the maximum thresholds that you should not exceed. If everything is okay, then you're fine for reliability. If you are in the opposite situation where you do not have a motor that is running cool, you actually have the car is achieving the goal, it's hitting 50 miles an hour, maybe it's not even hitting 50 miles an hour, but you're getting some heat buildup in the motor that's exceeding your maximum threshold. Stop the vehicle immediately, uh, rethink your gearing choice. What you can do is you can take your 16 tooth gear. This is why you take the pinion and you want to size it in the middle of your range. If your range is at the max here and the min here, you want to make sure you pick it here. And this is why you want to do that. From here, now you can adjust within this range. You picked a KV that is close enough to allow you some flexibility to adjust. If you're looking for more top speed, you can increase that pinion gear. Just note, there's going to be more heat that comes with that. If you're getting too much heat, you can dial it back a little bit. Uh, in a rare case, if you need to even go outside of the maximum range of your pinion gear, you'd be able to go and select a new spur gear for your application. There's many models that have a different range of spur gears that you'd be able to use. So that's another thing to keep in mind as well. The only thing that's left is if you like that video, please hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can see you in that next one. Thank you for watching.